chapter summary, chapter 18, electric fields, and circuits from matter and interactions. Uh, so again, this is just a summary. Read the book. The book's great. Huge fan of the book. And what we're doing in this chapter is trying to take an approach uh, using the idea of electric fields and electric potential to look at a circuit. So here's a very simple circuit that we could try to explain. Here's a battery, and I have these two wires. I'm going to connect it to the light bulb. It's not very bright. Kind of disappointed there. Um, let's see if I hold it a little bit better. Yeah, that's terrible. Okay, well, it's on. Um, but how can we use electric fields to explain this? Because before we looked at something like this metal conductor, and we said that if you have uh, a, a conductor and you apply an electric field, external electric field, the charges will move around to make the net electric field inside zero, because if it was not zero, those charges would move, right? And then they would rearrange until it is zero. That's what we said before. Now we're going to look at a case where that's not quite true. Let's start with the following example, which is kind of strange, but it's useful. Imagine that I have a, a parallel plate capacitor. I'm going to draw it like this. And then I have uh, excess positive charge. I'm going to put them on this side just to make it simpler. And excess negative charge over there. Now imagine that I take a wire and I connect the two ends this way. One of the things that we saw in uh, our calculation of the electric field was this idea of a fringe field. So although we like to say the electric field is constant in here, there is an electric field on this side, and there is, no, it'd be going this way. It's pointing this way, and there's an electric field pointing that way, a fringe field. And if there is a fringe field, that means that this electric field is going to make charges move. And let's actually say the negative charges, the negative charges are free. So these negative charges are actually going to move, and we will have an electric current. Remember that we define an electric current as Q N U A E. So this is the uh, charge carrier value. It could be an electron. This is the charge carrier density. I should write these down. Let's see. I'll put charge density. Is charge carrier density, how many charges per um, free per cubic meter. This is the value of the charge. So let's just put charge. Uh, U is the electron mobility. Mobility. It's how easily charges can move in that material. And then A is a cross-sectional area. I'll just put cross area. And then E is the electric field. So remember that when we apply an electric field in a material, then the, if we have an electric field, then the charges do move. Uh, they move with some drift velocity, and we can calculate that drift velocity into a current with this equation right here. So this is actually an important equation. And we looked at that before. So if there's an electric field, I'm going to get a current, and that those charges are going to move. Now, I only have a finite number of charges here, so they're going to, as charges get off the capacitor, then I'm going to have fewer charges, I'm going to decrease my electric field. That's a different problem that we're going to look at later. Um, but imagine that I had a conveyor belt in here. This is the conveyor belt model of a battery. So I, this conveyor belt actually takes negative charges from here and puts them over there, and it takes positive charges from here, and it puts them over there. So it maintain, it can maintain this uh, capacitor charge capacitor thing, even though the charges are moving around here. So if an electron starts here, it goes around the loop, it gets over here, it hops on the conveyor belt, it gets back over there. So this is what we would, how we would represent a battery. And I got spelled it correctly. Um, and the change of potential across this uh, the, of the battery, delta V battery, we actually call, this is weird, an electromotive force. It's not a force. E-M-F. And that's just the uh, process that maintains a, a change in electric potential across the battery. It's actually in here, this battery, it's a chemical process. There's a chemical process that uh, 
acts like that conveyor belt. It's very similar to the conveyor belt in a lot of ways. Okay, but now if I maintain that and I have charges moving, well, if I have an electric field like that, why doesn't the charges keep on, uh, or over here, the charge keep accelerating this way? Well, it turns out that you end up building up, and this is the, the book does a really good job on this, okay? It's not super important for the calculations, but you end up building up some surface charges on the wire to make it such that the electric field is in the direction of the wire. And if it's not that way, then, no, the electric field goes the other way. Sorry, I'm thinking about the flow. So the electric field is in the direction of the wire because of the surface charges. Okay, so what do we have so far? We have the following. We have, uh, you can have a constant electric field in a wire and that will produce a constant current because of the drift velocity. And one of the ways to do that is with this electromotive force of a battery, essentially. I know it's a lot, trust me, it's a lot. Okay, let me go ahead and tell you the two main things in this, lab, in this chapter. Number one, delta V loop equals zero volts. This says that if I look at the change of potential around any loop, I'm going to get zero. And this is because the electric field is a conservative force. If you go back to your previous chapter on physics, your previous semester, when you looked at potential energy, you said we can make a potential energy from a force if it's conservative, if the, the path, the work done by the force along any path is the same. And if the work done along any path is the same, the work done around a loop has to be zero. So this is really just conservation of energy. Number two, um, I'll write this like this, I in equals I out. This says that if I have some junction, it can be anything like this, and I have current coming into that junction, I in, I have current coming out, I out, those have to be the same. Because if they're not, if the charges per second coming in is different than the charges coming out per second, then you're going to get a charge buildup because charge is conserved, right? We can't just we can't destroy charge. You can destroy charge. You can destroy a negative charge as long as you destroy positive charge too. But that would make uh, that would still satisfy this condition. Okay. So this is called the current conservation, but it really comes from conservation of charge. This is conservation of energy. Okay, let's look at a simple circuit. Let's go back up here and see how we can apply our simple idea of a battery connected to a wire. So imagine that I have a, a plate with a battery. This is my battery. So there's my conveyor belt. And then I have a wire. I'm going to draw a thick wire. Of course, I have thin plates, but, you know, you can only draw what you can draw. So this has, uh, let's say this is 1.5 volt battery, right? So that's going to be my, I'm going to write that as EMF, my electromotive force. And this wire has some properties. It has an area A. It has a total length L. It has a charge carrier, den uh, charge carrier Q, density U, N, uh, electron mobility U. So in this case, if I use the loop rule and I go around this loop, I know that delta V loop has to be equal to zero. Well, let's add up the, the voltages. So here, let's say this side's positive. If I go this way, I'm going to go from negative to positive. So I'm going to get a positive. If I start here and go across the battery, I get EMF. I get a positive EMF, a positive 1.5 volts. Now that's the positive side, I'm going to get an electric field going this way, we'll call that E. And if the electric field is in the direction of the wire, as I integrate E dot DL around the wire, I'm just going to get minus E L, right? It's going to be the electric field times the length of the wire. And remember that minus signs there because when we integrate delta V is negative the integral of E dot dl the negative sign is because we're really doing the work done by the force and moving it to the other side of the equation to make a potential so that's that so that has to be true right so i can use this to calculate the electric field in the wire or i could do it to calculate uh the current but let's just write the our idea for the current i 
Q in A U E. That's my electric, that's my current. And I'm going to solve for E and plug it in right here. So I get zero equals EMF minus E, but E is equal to I over Q in A U. So minus uh, I over Q in A U times L. Now we actually get something really important here that we're going to see in more detail later. Let me rewrite this. E0 equals EMF minus I times L over Q in A U. So this is the change of potential across this wire, right? Because those are going to be equal. That's the current. And these are all properties of the wire. And we will write this as the resistance later. Uh, but right now in this chapter, they just say, okay, it's just part of the wire, right? Those are all things that depend on the wire, and that's the current. So if I increase the voltage across the battery, if I increase the EMF, I is going to increase. But if I change the properties of the wire, also I would increase or change, right? At the very least, change. So that's a simple wire. This would be what would happen if you take a wire and connect it to a battery. But what about this case of my terrible... Uh, example of a of a light bulb that you can barely even see. You can see that. Look, it's on. See off. On off. On, on. That's on off on on off right. Let's see if I can. Okay, it's on. You you get it that right. You're fine with that. So we can model this as the following. Suppose I, what is an incandescent bulb? It's really just a wire, right? If you look at this really closely, which we did, let's see how close I can get this in focus. Focus. Well, if you take a bulb, there's just a wire in there. That's, all, that's how it works. And so I'm going to draw this as a battery. I'm not going to draw it as a conveyor belt. There's my battery. And then I have a wire, a very thick wire comparatively. And that goes to a thin wire and then back to a thick wire. And then I draw it from the other side, thick, thin, thick. That's your light bulb. Now, uh, this just turns out that this really thin filament gets really hot and that's what makes a light. It's also not a very efficient light bulb. We can talk about light bulbs later. Uh, but let's just give some properties. So let's say it's all the same kind of wires. So they all have the same N. They all have the same Q. They all have the same U. But this is going to be length L1. That's the length of this wire. This is length L2. And let's say this is also length L1. They have the same length right there. And then this is A1. has an area A1. This has an area A2. And this is also A1. And the battery is EMF. So now if I apply the loop rule here, I'm going to get two different electric fields, right? I'm going to have to get a different electric field in here if the current is to be the same. Let me go ahead and write this as uh, I1. This is going to be I2 inside there. And then we're going to go back to I1, right, because it's the same uh, area. And that's the only way that we can get charge conserved is that if we have different currents, because remember, the current depends on the area. If I change the area, I'm going to have to increase the current in order to make, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to increase the velocity uh, to make this work. But let's use our loop rule and I say delta V loop. It's going to be the, if I go around this way, I get EMF. And then I have an electric field inside of here. It's going to be minus E1 L1. And then I have an electric field inside of here, minus E2 L2. And then over here, I'm going to get the same electric field. So I get minus E1 L1 again. And that has to be equal to zero because it's a conservative field. Okay, now if I1 is equal to I2, right? That's what I just said, and it has to be true in order for uh, charge to be conserved. I can write this as Q N U A1 E1 equals Q N U A2 E2. Now this assumes, like I said, that they're the same material. They don't have to be the same material, and in light bulbs they're not, but I'm just going to try to make it a little bit easier. You can imagine those being different. But if they're the same material, then these two cancel, and I can write this as E1 
one equals A2 over A1 E2. I could write that. Now I can put that in up here. So let's just rewrite this equation. I have two E1s and two L1s. I can combine those two together. I get EMF minus two E1 L1 minus E2 L2 equals zero. Now I can plug in my value, this expression for E1, and I get EMF minus two E1, which is gonna be A2 over A1, E2 L1, minus E2 L2 equals zero. Now I have an expression that only depends on E2. So I could solve for E2. I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna, I'll do a problem later, but just imagine that you could solve for that. Once I solve for E2, I can go back up here and find the current I2. So I have this situation of this light bulb with a battery and if I know the properties, just the properties of the dimensions of the wire, assuming they're the same, I could find the current, right? Now, what would happen if I changed the length or changed the areas? That would change the electric field. It would change the current too, okay? But the most important thing, loop rule, conservation of energy, and we call this the junction rule, and this is conservation of charge. And that's really what this whole chapter is about. It's about those two things. Um, yeah, the book really goes through some other ideas about how fast things work and how we can test this stuff, which is super useful and important. But in terms of solving problems, this is the kind of stuff we want to use. The loop rule and the junction rule. Conservation of energy, conservation of charge. I'll stop there. The next chapter is going to be a lot more calculations, but also awesome. The end.